Hello, beautiful people. Um, thank you for jumping on live. I'm Danielle here from Transcendence for the Truth. I'm very grateful to be on live today talking to you about this. Um, it's actually just come through to me um, with some reflection. Um, some I've had quite a few people make some personal stories and experiences around um, my post around my son. Um, and I want to start firstly initially by saying that um, these situations can't be helped sometimes um, and there's no one at fault and they should be great awareness and learning tools. And that's the reason the post that I put up was posted. It was an awareness for parents. It's awareness for parents to check in with their kids and see how their kids feel and if their kids are comfortable communicating um, and what different things are taking place so that you can come in connection with your children more so that you can support them and love them and um, be that voice for them or to teach them how to speak up for themselves. So um, in reflection to that post, if you missed out, um, basically there was an accident. Accidents happen um, and... Uh, my son had an accident at school after asking to go to the toilet and he was denied access to the toilet and soiled himself. Now, I hold no judgment against the school or the teacher and there's no resentment or anger or um, misapplied energy. I actually see it as a gift because it was a gift to teach my children to voice up for their own bodies and to voice up for their own needs and that no one can tell them when and when they cannot um, be use when they can and can't release you know their own bodily functions. Not to mention he's young and he's still learning, and and, and kids get distracted and they're focusing, and then all of a sudden um, they need to go to the toilet and and. So that was a great lesson to teach my son to speak up, you know, that he can listen to his body over another human being. You know, just like everyone, we all should be listening to our bodies and listening to ourselves over other human beings telling us what we can and can't do. Really, that's the lesson for everyone. The lesson is that listen to your emotions, listen to your energy, listen to what your body's telling you because it's always communicating to you over someone else's logic because they don't know you. They aren't inside of you. They can't tell you how you feel. They can't tell you what you need. And it's your responsibility to yourself to love yourself, to identify that and then voice it or take action on it. Now, having said that, there was um, quite a few people that had reflected. One of them in particular had shared a very personal story um, around when they were young and an experience that um, had left um, uncomfortable feelings within them where they needed to go to the toilet and the teacher said no and it wasn't, um, it wasn't a number one, it was a number two. And so having soiled himself, um, then that put them in... A child puts a child in a lot of embarrassment and shame. Um, what he then further shared with me was that um, that that teacher back then went and covered it up by not actually communicating that she had denied him access to the toilet, which further um, instills that belief that I can't trust people. I can't trust that when someone does something um, that they're going to tell the truth and be honest and it's not safe for me. Um, so having a, a, a broader perspective on this, right, you can see this in many different different ways. You can look at this in the child's perspective of, you know, then they can't trust adults, they can't trust their caregivers, they can't um, believe that they're going to be looked after and nurtured because then even when they have made a mistake, it's then not owned up to. So that creates a lot of um, 
a challenging belief and a program for a child, then that can be recreated throughout our experience as we grow up. And those underlying beliefs that we have laying there within our subconscious mind can be um, something that will create experiences where we don't trust others because it's not safe or we don't trust others because um, it's then caused pain and embarrassment on us so we can only trust ourselves. Um, and there's many other different things that could be recreated out of that beliefs um, around not being able to speak up for your needs and not having your needs met, which means then you can have no voice and you could be one of those people that becomes very quiet and you don't speak about what you desire. And if someone asks you how to love you more, you may not know you know, because you've never had a voice. You've never been allowed to check in to see what it is you need and what you desire because you've always focused externally on other people um, and what they say. The other part of this perspective to look at is that the teacher in the, that situation um, would have felt would have had a very fragile ego, you know. That person was too insecure or too fearful of the consequence of their own actions that they were unable to own up to the what took place, the denial of the child who was an innocent person that, that is putting themselves and their care into an, another, an adult, and that adult has taken advantage of their authority and their power and then not being able to own up to it because of their own fear and their own fragile ego of if they did own up to the fact that that was a part was their responsibility and they have to own up to their actions created that situation for that child then it's out of protection of that person going into that level of vulnerability, not only a fear of the consequence from the school in that situation, but also the fear of the um, internal uncomfortability of po possibly the pain that person would have felt for seeing the embarrassment and shame on this child um, and the level of shame that would have created within that, that, that person. And this is what we tend to do, um, all, all of us humans and people, humanity, um, a very, very, uh, uh, don't take accountability. Um, most don't take accountability for their actions and their ego will justify and lie to prevent the vulnerability and the lower feelings of what has taken place, which usually means that person doesn't learn because you have to actually feel the, uh, the, you have to feel what that situation and experience has caused you so that you can then decide not to choose that behavior again. And you do that through the contrast. That's how we learn. We learn through pain. We learn through discomfort. We learn through the things that we don't enjoy so that we can choose the things and the behaviours and the actions that bring us a level of peace or happiness or joy or allowance rather than denial and justification that could then repeat the same situation because you haven't actually learnt by looking at it. Um, when you have a very fragile sense of self, a very fragile ego, you may justify it in any way that you can so that you can't, you don't make yourself wrong and it's always the other person's fault or you can go into complete denial about a situation so then you don't have to feel what your behaviour actually made you feel. It's not about the other person, really. It's only about if my ego is so fragile 
and I have to protect it because I don't want to feel, then I have to lie to myself and I have to justify my behavior so that I can project it as an outside external problem. And if we're doing that, then we aren't consciously self-reflecting and we aren't able to actually take note of who we are at that point in time and whether or not that still works for us and if that's something that we still want to do, we still want to be. So when the ego is hurting, the first step to making positive change and coming into a space of allowance is seeing that the ego is hurt. And seeing that your behavior was unkind or unconscious. Seeing that something that you did was stuck in your own tunnel vision and your own perspective. That you were unable to step outside of your own stuff. To look at the other people in your direct environment and how your behavior could affect others. But you have to see that. If you're unwilling to see, you're unwilling to change. I hope that you enjoyed this little video. Have a beautiful, beautiful afternoon and God bless.